Hi everyone, it's Jennifer, the Whistle Stop Stitcher, and I am back for Floss Tube episode 69. Today is Sunday, April 3rd, 2022. And I have been gone for a very long time. I think my last video was on February 20th. Um, and I did not intend for it to be that long. Um, I think it was February 20th. Yeah, it was. Um, so, I have a lot of stuff here on this table to show you. Um, I hope this video is not too long, um, but I guess we're gonna see. I don't have a ton of stitching. I've worked on a couple of things since then, but I kind of haven't been in a stitching mood. So I've kind of maybe been stitching here and there, you know, like I might go a week in between touching projects, but I have done some quilting, so I'll show that. Um, I have not stopped buying crap so <laughs> I've got a lot of shopping to share haul um, and I've got a little review that I will share with you as well of a product that I received um, and I do have a couple of almost fully finished objects they've been sitting here super close to being fully finished but not quite and I figured I'm gonna just go ahead and show you what I've got so far and then you can help me figure out the last couple of details because at this rate who knows when I'm ever gonna be able to show them okay so but first um, and I couldn't wait any longer because next weekend we're going on vacation we're gonna be gone for like a week um, going to Disney World um, and so there won't be any stitching or anything happening there um, and no time to make videos obviously if I'm not at home so um, yeah, we got to get this done and out of the way. And also, I need to get this video done quickly because my local Joanne is moving locations. And so I don't know why, but they're just right down the street from my house, like five minutes away. So I'm really sad that they're going to be closing that location and then they're opening in a new spot that's like a little bit farther. So maybe like 10 or 15 minutes, which in the scheme of things is not that big of a deal, except I really like the fact that it was just down the street from my house, like right next to the restaurant we eat at every week. So I could always just pop in and get something, but um, they are moving. And so today starts their liquidation sale. So I guess they're trying to you know, get rid of as much inventory as possible so they don't have to move it to the new location. So I'm gonna go over there and see if there's anything good on super sale. If their DMC is on sale and there's any left, I might just buy it all. Well, I'm not going to buy it all, but I might buy a lot. <laughs> I'm also going to look at the beads and see what they have. But last time I was there, they already had very little in the way of like good fabric. So I don't know that I'll bother looking at the fabric, but <laughs> we'll see. So I need to get this over and done with so that I can go over there and see what they have and then come back and do some other things I got to do tonight. So anyway, so let's get started. So first, before I dig into my stitching, I'm gonna share with you a product review. And so this is something I've never done before on this channel, um, but I was contacted by a company, um, they're called BenQ, and they make lamps. Um, and I know you're thinking, you're like, lamps? <laughs> What's that about? Um, but they make like, um, like natural light, daylight lamps for reading and you know other things and they reached out to me and asked if I might be interested in trying out their new reading lamp um, to see how I might like it for crafting so it looks like um, they are you know trying to see whether or not their reading lamps might also be appealing to crafters who need good light um, in order to do their projects so I've been contacted a few other times by other companies asking me if I wanted to get their products and review them on my channel and I have never taken any of them up on it. I just wasn't interested for whatever the reason. Um, but this one, when they reached out and I took a look at what it was that they were saying that they would um, send over, I was like, you know what? I'm actually really interested in trying this out. So I have noticed recently that I, I'm getting old <laughs> and I cannot see as well as I used to. Now I've always had bad eyesight. I have been nearsighted since I was a kid. Um, I wore glasses and contact lenses from the time when I was like about eight years old until 
I became an adult um, and then I had laser eye surgery um, right around the time I graduated from law school. That was almost 20 years ago and it's been great. My eyesight has been much improved, haven't needed to wear glasses since then. Um, but I've noticed now that I'm getting up in age. I'm over the age of 40 now. Um, I'm having more trouble seeing up close and my vision distance has gotten a little worse over the last year or two. So I actually did start in December, start wearing glasses again um, to watch TV and see in the distance. Um, I can still see well enough without them that I could really go without them. But anyway, um, I actually, I didn't wear them for the video because you can just see the reflection of my lights <laughs> in them. But anyway, all of this to say, I do not see as well as I used to. I have trouble stitching in low light. Um, and so I'm always on the lookout for something that can help me in terms of light. So like in my bedroom downstairs, I have a tall, like a floor lamp that my husband bought for me. Um, that's like super bright daylight lamp that he, uh, I don't even know what brand it is, but that one helps when I'm lying in bed. Sitting up here, normally if I stitch in this room, I sit in this comfy recliner right here. And I used to have a little ot light next to it. There's a little table behind me here that you can see. Um, but that I moved over to my sewing table to use um, over there. It's got like a USB plug and stuff. And so I have some things I plug into it over there and I use it to light up my sewing area. So I don't have a lamp over here anymore. Um, I do have an extra um, lamp in the ceiling, like a, like, you know, one of those recessed lights that helps quite a bit, but it's still just not that bright close up. So I was like, you know what? I need a new good light for sitting here next to my chair. So I'm going to try this out. All of that to say, I took them up on their offer and they sent it to me. So this is called the BenQ Genie e-reading lamp. And they sent it to me, um, asked me to make a review, did not tell me what I to say about it. They said, just, you know, post your honest review of what you think about the lamp. Um, and so I got it a week or so two weeks ago, uh, set it up up here and have been trying out the different settings. Um, I will insert a picture here of the box. Um, and so that's what it looks like. That's how it arrived. And I've actually got it sitting here with me on the table. So I'm going to see if I can pull it over a little bit so you can see it. Um, and so far I've really, I've liked it so far. And so I may have to zoom out a little bit. Let me see. Here. There we go. So here it is. Um, and so it's got this heavy base. This lamp is actually quite heavy. Um, so it seems to be very um, well made. And so this part here is all metal. Um, I think this bottom part is plastic, but I think there's a big metal piece underneath. Um, and when it comes, you do have to put it together, but it's just this one piece up here. This part is disconnected and so you just have to screw it in back here. And so it was super easy. It comes with the screws and the little Allen wrench and you just screw it together. And it was like, took me, you know, five minutes. So from opening the box to having it set up and working was like five minutes. Um, and so it is, I mean, very nice so far. So you can see, you just tap this little thing here and it turns on um, and you can have it like cool or warm light depending on, um, you turn this knob and it will change. And then if you tap it, you can turn the brightness up and down at whatever, you know, temperature you chose. And so I, when I stitch, use like the bright white light because I can see better that way. Um, you also, if you hold down on this end part here, it goes into like reading mode. So it kind of dims it down and gives it this nice kind of in between. Um, and so that's what you can use for reading. So, I mean, I'm sure you're all looking at me going, okay, this is just a lamp. <laughs> What's the big deal, right? Um, and yeah, I mean, it's a lamp. But um, I think the the thing that's interesting about this one, as opposed to like my little Ot light that I bought at Costco for like $25, um, you know, that one's about this tall and it's just straight up and down with a little 
let light that sticks off like this. You can adjust it a little bit. You can tilt the top part up, but it doesn't move that much. Um, I think what makes this one actually really nice for crafters is the fact that you can bend it like all the way down to here and you can adjust this part, you know, however you like. So you can set it like this and the light is directly over whatever you're using. So to me, that's the thing, I guess, about this one that's a little bit different is how much like range of motion it has, which I think is really kind of cool because you can set it on your table like this. And if you have your stitching like right in front of it, it's like completely lit up because of the shape of this and the way that you can get the stand completely out of the way. So I think it's very cool. So anyway, so that is the lamp. So um, I've really enjoyed using it. It looks, um, it's kind of nice and modern, cool looking. Um, and it just works well. And like I said, it is like really like heavy duty, like very well made. And so like my, like I said, I've got an Ot light that was like 25 or $30 that I got at Costco that, you know, works fine, but it's small and cheap plastic. Um, like this is, most of these pieces are metal. So I think it's gonna last um, a little bit longer. And you can also um, like tilt this head up here. So you can like turn it kind of sideways because it's got like a rotating like joint thing. So you can like pretty much put this in any like configuration that you might need for it to be over your workspace. So I like it. I think it's very nice. Um, I think its price is like about $180 on Amazon, which I think is a little steep, um, but it's, like I said, it's well made. It's very heavy, heavy duty. Um, and the fact that you can like move it around in pretty much any, you know, configuration that you might want, you know, maybe makes it worth that extra, you know, cost over and above some of the other similar lights. I know you can get, some of the Ot lights or the daylight um, company lamps are similar price. So it's not, it's not dissimilar from other companies who have similar lamps. Um, so yeah, you can, if you're interested, give it a try. I've got, um, I will put a link down below um, if you are interested in the description box. And thank you to um, BenQ for sending it over to me. I do appreciate it. Um, and I really do think I will enjoy using it. It's gonna sit right here on this table next to my comfy stitching chair. And um, I will be able to, because of the way it leans over, I'll be able to lean it over so that the lamp is over my lap and my hands while I am stitching. So that is definitely gonna be an improvement over the other lamp that I had before. Like I said, it was a small one and it just barely kind of leaned over and I had to, I'd have to tilt the top up so that the light would come across my lap and then the light was just shining like in my eyeballs <laughs> most of the time. So this one you can tilt it over and put it like this and so it's not shining in your eyes but it's still you know lighting up what you need it to light up. So very cool. Um, thank you again to uh, Ben Q for sending it to me and um, I will definitely be using it going forward anytime I'm stitching sitting in my comfy chair up here. So I appreciate it. If you're interested, you can click the link down below. All right, so moving on, let me zoom in a little bit so you can see my projects better. Um, I have not done a whole bunch of stitching since the last time I made a video. I had to go back and look at my book of days to see, and you'll see, look at this is March. And after the first week of March, I kind of just stopped. <laughs> I have not done much of anything since then. Um, I've actually been stitching a model for one of my own patterns and I haven't finished it yet. It's a spring pattern. I don't know when I'm gonna finish it. I put a little sneak peek on my Instagram, but now at this point, I don't, I don't think I'm gonna get it done and released. So sorry folks, but. Anyway, okay, so after I did my last floss tube, what have I done? I did start a new project. So let me show that to you. This is the Redbird Sampler by Brenda Gervais. Cute, 
a lot of people have been stitching this. Here are my flosses um, and my cute little, um, I don't know where I got this. Um, floss tech. Somebody sent this to me and I'm so sorry, but I cannot remember who it was. I'm a terrible stitchy friend. I'm so sorry. Um, I'm stitching this on 40 count affogato by Fiber on a Whim. And this is all I have so far. One little bird and a flower. The, the fabric is really nice. The colors are very pretty. I just, that was one day's worth of stitching. That's all I got done. So I need to pick that back up again, but I just haven't. Okay, so there was that. Then that same day I worked on, I think it's over here. I forgot to pull it out. I, I pulled out an old project that I haven't touched in like a year and a half or two years. This is Huckleberry Farm by the Blue Flower. And I really love this project. I just haven't touched it in a really long time. So I am stitching this on Picture This Plus. And I think it's the called for, it's 36 count shale, which I do think is the called for fabric. I know the called for shale. I don't know what count. 36 count. That's correct. Okay. And I'm using a combination of like some of the called for and some are conversion. I think I mostly converted all the like fancy flosses to my own stuff from stash. And then I, I think I'm using some of the called for DMC, maybe some of the other called for. I'm sorry. This fabric is so wrinkled. So That's what I've got so far. I did a lot of stitching on this in 2020. So all I did the other night was work on the house. So not a whole lot there. But I think I finished this little roof. I filled in the windows and some of the white trim. But I love this. It's so pretty. So I will pick it up again some point. I do, I do love it. Okay, this fabric is so wrinkled. Oh my gosh. I've had it like folded up in little like small folds so that I could bunch it up all in my hand while I was stitching. <laughs> all right, so that one I also worked on. And then... I worked on the Berry Bowl Sampler, which Carla Rolodex stitches and I are stitching this together for each other and then we're gonna swap. So we're both stitching the left side first. Um, let me see if I have the front piece here somewhere. So you can, I think everybody knows what this looks like, but. Here it is. So we're stitching this side first. And, uh oh. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I'm sorry. Excuse me. And I know I've got a Kleenex in here somewhere. There it is. Um, so I am stitching this first half on Color and Cotton Aged Paper, 36 count, with one strand of floss. And that's what I have so far. Sorry, Carla, I'm like slow. But that's what I got. So I need to pick this back up again because I believe Carla and I are gonna see each other at StitchCon. And it would kind of be nice if I could have this half done before we go so that I could give it to her there, but I don't know. I haven't talked with Carla about this, so 
I have no idea how far along she is. So maybe both of us are not uh, on track to be finished by then, but whatever, it doesn't matter. So, and there's the floss for that one. Okay, then I think I did a little tiny bit more on Modern Folk Embroideries at GBH 1848, which I do not have the pattern because it's only a PDF. Um, so I will insert a picture of it here. Here are the flosses. It's all DMC. I love this pattern and I just, I need to finish it because it's just so pretty. And I am stitching this on a color and cotton as well. 40 count white tea. And this color is perfect. It's just like a very like creamy ivory. It is just so pretty. And the colors of this are so pretty. There we go. So I'm not sure what I may have worked. I think I filled in some of these flowers. And then I started these ones over here. I kind of jump around a little bit, depending on, like if I've got some leftover floss and I just find another motif that has that color and start stitching. So this is what I've got so far. The border is done, except there may be like one or two of these little flowers. Oh yeah, like there's like one flower down here that's missing like a couple of its stitches. I think other than that, the border is pretty much all done. But I love that. So pretty. Okay, so there's that one. And then, What else? Oh, and then the only other thing that I have worked on was a little bit more of my Modern Folk Embroidery 2022 stitch along. And I've been really trying to keep up, but I did not finish the March section in March. So I'm still not done yet, um, but I'm really close to being done. And so I'm just gonna do like Julie um, Kansas City Girl in a Colorado World, what she did last year with her uh, Modern Folk Embroidery Stitch Along. And I think her thing was like, she wasn't gonna let her fa herself fall more than like one month behind. Um, so like, I have to have March finished by the end of April, you know, et cetera, so that she could make sure to try to, to try to get it done by the end of the year. So I really do need to get this going. Okay, but I did finish February on time. And so that would have been I don't know if I had it that section finished the last time I made a video or not. But anyway, this is on 36 count color and cotton biscotti. In case you can't tell, I love color and cotton fabric. And it, as you will see from when I show you my haul, because I have bought a whole mess of color and cotton fabric recently, but I, honestly, their fabric is perfect. Absolutely perfect. I love everything about it. It's like the best to stitch on. The colors are beautiful. It's just perfection. I love it. So if anyone out there ever like, for whatever reason, like doesn't like it and wants to de-stash or something, hit me up because I love color card back. <laughs> okay, there's what we've got. So, this is January. February is like these guys and, sorry, I'm sorry, it's far away. And like the ha this half of this flower thing and the cherub. And then so March was the other half of this flower, this cherub, these initials, and then another set of these guys like this. So I've got one guy done. So really all I've got left to do is the thing in the middle plus the other guy over here. And then I think there's a little bit of some stuff down here in the bottom. And then there will be April over here, which is the last section of this top 
third of the pattern. So the last section here turns the corner. And it's got not identical motifs, it's got the same, like, I think it's got the same, whoop, Etsy sale. Um, it's got the same little deer, but it has, I think, some different motifs than those ones on the other side. And obviously the rest of her name. But I think this is turning out really pretty. I'm using um, Silks For You, a charcoal colored silk. The color is PR043. One strand on this 36 count. And it is an absolute uh, dream to stitch with that floss on this fabric. The Silks For You floss is really nice. And the one strand on 36 or 40 count is perfect. Okay, so that was the stitching. And I think that's it. Um, I need to grab my drink really quickly. Hold on, let me see if I can reach it. Got it. <laughs> This chair has a cushion on it that every time I move, the chair or the cushion like folds up underneath me. <laughs> it's like very annoying. Okay. Let's see. I did finish a crochet blanket that I haven't even taken a picture of and posted on Instagram or anything because I've just been lazy. But I did finish that at the beginning of March. Um, and then otherwise in March, I've just been stitching on one of these models for my, that's a new spring like triplets. Um, and I've gotten one of the three stitched and I just don't feel like stitching the rest of it. So I don't know when those will come. We'll see. All right, so last stitching thing I'm gonna show you before I get into this mountain of haul that I have sitting in front of me is I have three finishes that I've shown before that I'm in the process of fully finishing and I will show them to you give you a little sneak peek of what they look like but one of them is this is a freebie from hands-on design and I finished it into a little pillow this was on like an ornament cut that I got from Fire Poppies and I don't know what the color of the fabric is. I don't remember any of the details, but I know I've showed the finish in a previous video. <laughs> so you'll have to go back and find it somewhere. Um, but look at how cute that is. And so here's the backing fabric. And I thought that was cute and it matches really well. I have not sewn up the edge yet. And I haven't figured out what kind of trim to put on this. So I think I might use this one. It matches perfectly. And so it'll kind of blend in a little because it's the same color as the linen, but I think it'll look cute. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. Lady.Creates chenille. Next one is Another, this is Hello from Liz Matthews. And I don't remember what the pattern's called, like Two Pumpkins Bright or something like that. And look at how cute this is. <laughs> look at that. Little pillow. And there's the backing fabric. And again, I have not sewn up the hole or attached the... Um, and so I was thinking of... I think I'm gonna use this one. This I think is a piece of chenille that came out of one of my grab bags that I got. And it's a nice bright orange and I think it'll look cute on the edge. So there's that one. And then the last one is this pattern. This is from Abby, Top Knot Stitcher. It's so adorable. Look at the little ghost. So cute. 
And so I put some of this dyed lace trim. I think this also may have come from either a lady, It's I know it's from lady.creates. I just don't remember if it came from like one of the grab bags or if I think it might have been part of like one of the finishing kits I got when I was in the club. Um, and so this fabric I thought just matched perfectly with that lace. Whoops. And so for this one, I'm torn between these. I think I'm gonna use this one, but this one could work too. But I think I'm gonna use this one around the outside edge. Anyway, so preview, almost fully finished. Little pillows. So hopefully I will get those done at some point. Okay, so next. Haul, there's a lot of it. I have a bin here that I've been just putting stuff in as it arrives. So I did buy a bunch of, not a bunch, but I, you know, I made some market purchases. Um, and then I made a couple of orders to kit up some of those purchases. And then um, there were a couple of projects that I wanted to start and I wasn't sure, um, like I didn't have fabric large enough to start like peacocks in the garden. I think I showed that in my last video. So I ordered like a couple of different half yards and then those eventually arrived and I didn't, you know, it turned out I didn't need them because a different one I'd ordered earlier was, you know, looked fine. So I ended up with a bunch of fabric and then color and cotton. Every so often post these like, hey, there's a bunch of fabric in the shop or they had like these like limited edition, like um, seconds, you know, like ones that didn't make the cut for regular, you know, colors. So I went and bought a bunch of those. It's just Anyway, and then as you all probably already know, then Fire Poppies announced that they're going out of business, which I'm super sad about, but I'm, I mean, I'm very excited for them that um, they're retiring and they're going to get to travel and stuff like that. So yay for them. Sad for us who are going to lose one of our favorite shops. But um, so they had like a, having a going out of business sale. And so I ordered a bunch of stuff, which hasn't arrived yet. So that'll be next time. Um, but then, you know, like some, I made an order from like Hobby House, Needleworks, anyway, anyway, it's just been a little crazy. So let's just get started. This stuff is all mixed up. It's in no particular order because I just can't, I couldn't keep track of it all. So first I'll show you, like I said, I placed an order for some larger cuts of fabric when I was trying to find fabric for um, the peacocks in the garden. And I ended up ordering from Hoop and Frame. And when I ordered, um, first of all, they had a kit for a hands on hands across the sea sampler that was just beautiful that I wanted. So I ordered that and then I went ahead and threw in all the other fabrics. And I'm sorry about the crunching noise, but I just realized that this is not the cover's not showing. All right, so let me show, let me just show you really quickly the the kit that I got was for this Memories of the Past by Hands Across the Sea, and I just love it because I love those purple flowers. It's just the border with like the two shades of purple are so pretty. So I ordered the kit with the floss, um, and I went ahead and got the Averisua 100 three silks and so here's how they came look at all those beautiful colors pretty and then inside here is the fabric that I'm I chose to use and this is one that came in one of my orders from color and cotton this is a 46 count linen in the color limestone and with the 46 count, it'll just fit on a fat quarter 
if I use like a two and a half inch border instead of three inches. So I think this is a nice, the color is so pretty. It's just a very nice, almost grayish, you know, tan neutral. And so with the 103 being a thinner silk, it'll look nice on this on the 46 count. Plus it allows me to get away with using a fat quarter instead of having to buy a fat half for just an extra inch or two that I need. So that is in here with this because I am going to someday, someday I'll stitch this. <laughs> okay. So, and along with that, I bought, I got some fabric from Hoop and Frame. And I, these are all by Legacy Linen. Um, and these are all half yard cuts of their 38 count. And so this is not an over dyed linen, um, but they have really pretty colors. So this one's called Wayfarer's Cloak. I don't know if you can see the color. There you go. This one is Fuller's Teasel, which you can see is a yellower color. This one's Filbert, which is more of a kind of a taupey warm brown. And then this one is called Brewer's Malt, which is more of a golden. So it's hard to see with the, uh, let me put that like that. These two are, you can see are a little bit similar. Sorry for the glare. I don't want to take them all out of the package. There you go. So more of a gray, a little bit darker brown, yellower brown, and then a real dark there. So I got those. And then, so that was everything that was from Hoop and Frame. And then, like I said, I got a couple of different, two different orders from Color and Cotton. So these are limited edition. This is a 36 count eighth of a yard, 36 count quarter yard, a fat quarter, 36 count fat quarter, 32 count fat quarter. This is a 40 count fat quarter, a 36 count fat quarter, a 16 count Ada fat quarter, and then a 32 count fat quarter. So you can see all those beautiful colors. They're just all neutrals. Love it. And then the last two are, I finally got my November and December fabrics of the month from the Crazy Annie's Color and Cotton Fabric Club. This one is a 40 count fat quarter in pear wood, which is a beautiful brown. And then this one's 40 count sea salt, which is a greenish color. So both of those are very pretty. Love color and cotton. Um, okay. So what else? Just, just chucking stuff on the floor. <laughs> All right, so some of my market haul is what I've got in here. And let me show you that here, I think. Okay, again, in no particular order. And some of them I've kitted up already, so I'll show you those in a minute because we have the, the, the stuff with them. This is the Charming Cow Sampler by Little Robin Designs. Sorry for the glare. Love that. Seasons of the Heart by With Thy Needle and Thread, Brenda Gervais. I love these pillows. I actually ordered, I think, the floss for them because I want to start these. 
I got 1844 Lady Man by Bendy Stitchy. That is just like <laughs> so fabulous. I think there's a stitch along happening. I need to join that. I love the colors and it's just so cute. <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> I love it. <sighs> Pink Cottage School by Hello from Liz Matthews. Look at how pretty that is. I love the border. It's so pretty. I love this one. The Moons of 2022 by Kathy Barrick. I mean, come on. It's fabulous. Okay, and then this one, I mean, I had to get it because how could I not? Corgi Caboodle by Plum Street. I mean, that's so cute. Paulette, if you're watching, which I know you're not, but if you are, can you please do something with French Bulldogs? <laughs> I really need like a Frenchy Fandango or something like that. <laughs> please. Okay. Speaking of Frenchies, Remy is absolutely awesome as always. He is the best dog. He is so funny and so cute and I can't even tell you. Just go follow me on Instagram and you will see a million pictures of him and videos and because he's just the cutest thing ever. Okay, moving on. Heartstring Samplery. Really friends. I love this. Look at how cute that is. Sorry. So cute. And then I love this one. I need to start this. Except I'm missing the one <laughs> color of TMC, the red. I I can't find it in my stash. Keeper of the Pins by Brenda Gervais with thy needle and thread. Okay, so I'm going to Joanne's Day. I'm going to get that DMC 22 <laughs> that I need to start this. Because these are little. They're quick stitches. And they're so cute. I love that. Okay, so that's some of the... A few patterns. I tried to limit myself to like only one pattern per designer. Except I think I bought two from Plum Street. Although I don't know where it is. I don't see it in here. Oh, I think it's in my it's in my bag. I'll pull it out in a minute. Okay. Yes, here's the rest of my ones that just arrived. Okay, um, so yeah, I had one more. I thought I did. Oh yeah, here it is. One more Plum Street, Adorn Your Heart. I love that big old pink house. It's so cute. So cute. And then Love is the Key by Teresa Kogut. Oh, I love her patterns. They're just a lot of stitching, but they're like very whimsical. And I just think they're so cute. But I did, like I said, I tried to limit myself to just one from each designer. Uh, the Mary Mary Pin Keep by Stacy Nash. I think that's really cute. Um, okay, and then, so I ordered from Abby Topknot, and look at this, I got a freebie pattern. Dirty Annie's Southern Style. What would Dolly do? Look at that. Oh, it's see. How cute is that? I mean, who doesn't love Dolly? She's a national treasure. Okay, um, and then I did get Shakespeare's Peddler 2 by Julia. And these, like, these kinds of patterns and, like, my hands across the sea ones and stuff, those are ones that are firmly in the, you know, the collecting is a different hobby from the stitching. Because, I mean, I have all these beautiful, like, sampler patterns. I just, there's no way I'm ever going to be able to stitch all these before I die someday. So I guess I'm just collecting them to use them as beautiful, inspirational stuff. 
All right, and then of course, Blackbird Designs, the humming, humming of the bees. I mean, this is just ridiculous how good it is. I mean, come on. I just, I can't even, I can't even. Okay, and then A Heart Remembers. I mean, come on. Uh, I love this. And I mean, I love this one. I mean, I love these ones too. I mean, these are great, but the one I really want to do first is this one. I mean, it is so beautiful. So I, or I ordered that floss for it. Um, when I was ordering from fire poppies and then I think I made another order from somewhere else. Oh no, I already got that order. Um, yeah anyway so i attempted to kit it up as much as i could um and then i got also more fabric i have a fabric problem these are both from fox and rabbit 40 count linen and one is flannel flower and one is salt bush pretty and then this is i'm in the ornament club from Crazy Annie's, from Annie B's Folk Art, the 12 Days of Christmas Stocking Ornament. And this is the third one from March, the three French hens. Look how cute those are. I, you know, I have the, with the first month came the floss and the fabric and everything. I just need to start these because they're so little and they would be nice like quick finishes. Make me feel like I'm actually getting something done. Okay. And then in here, I think Abby sent me a skein of floss. Look at how pretty this is. Thank you, Abby. And then I got, this is from February, the Fine Floss Club Hot Pink from Fat Quarter Shop. And I do believe that I've also gotten the, oh no. I just realized I wrinkled up one of my patterns. Um, hold on, hold on. Here it is. March is green. NPI. These are fabulous. NPI is so, so nice to stitch with. I realized I messed up my pattern here. It's all wrinkled. I had pulled this with some fabric and floss and kitted it up. I think I showed this last time. Oh, yikes. Anyway. Oh, and then I have to show, I am terrible because I got this a long time ago in February. I, I got this right before I did my last video and I forgot to show it. So this is from Colleen Rebel Stitcher. And this is so cute. She wrote me a note. And she says, I'm gonna, sorry Colleen, I'm gonna read this out loud. It says, Dear Remy, I wanted to share some Frenchy swag. My mom shows me your pics. You are handsome like me. <laughs> Love Albus. P.S. My mom says the needle minder glows in the dark. How cute is that? I can't look at this. Thank you so much, Colleen. I, I totally, I, I'm going to send her some Remy swag as well. And I just haven't had a chance to do it yet. I haven't been so scatterbrained lately. I'm just apologize. So thank you. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> so cute. Okay. Moving on. We gotta hurry because I gotta show you all the rest of this stuff and I, I'm at 49 minutes and I gotta make sure, I gotta keep this like to an hour or less. Okay, next. This is another one of my market purchases. This is Hands On Design, season two, a year of celebrations. I love these. And I watched um, her, Kathy Hopperman's video 
that she made a few weeks ago where she was showing these and they are just adorable. I love them. And so I got the floss and I got some fabric to use for it. It's not the called for, but um, the called for is 32 count driftwood fabrics by Stephanie and I got this 32 count Duxbury by Fox and Rabbit which I think will look nice. Look at this. It's like a nice dingy brown. So I think that'll look good. So I got a fat half of this because you need that much in order to make all the pieces separate. Okay. So I have these ones all ready to go. The floss just... Sorry. The floss just arrived a few days ago, so I'm now... Actually, I think it arrived... Yeah, it arrived on Friday. So now I'm ready to go. And so I think I might start stitching. I'm just not sure whether I should start with May, which feels a little ambitious. I think I might have it done by May. Or maybe I'll start with June and give myself a little bit more time. Um, sorry, I'm trying to keep these things organized here. Um, and then the next one is a market purchase that I absolutely love. And I think I'm gonna, this one's the one I'm gonna start first. This is Matter in Hand by Jeanette Douglas. Look at that. It's like a stitching sampler. Like the thimble and the tomato pincushion, a little thing like the floss scissor. I mean, I just absolutely love this so much. And so I have flosses. And this fabric here is um, 40 count Elegant Bean from Lady.Creates. She only dyes one color of fabric and that's it. And it's just beautiful and I think it looks perfect for this. So that's what I'm gonna use. And I got that when I ordered from Lady.Creates. Some of her beautiful pins that she um, did as a fundraiser for Ukraine um, and so I got two sets of those they are so pretty they have the little sunflower beads with the blue gems um, and they're, they're just so pretty and for a great cause and so I think she's making some new like floss rings I think they're gonna be coming next also as a fundraiser um, and so maybe, uh, hopefully I'll be able to get one of those as well. I did get some new needles to try. These are the John James Tapestry Petites. Um, at least one of them I think is the Petites. I don't know. I usually use Bowen 26 or 28, which I like. have no problem with those, but I figured I would try these. Um, and then these are the random flosses that were left over when I finished kitting out my projects that I don't know what I got them for. Um, this is nine skeins of Weeks Dye Works Oscar. <laughs> so I somehow ended up ordering 12 skeins of Oscar. I have no idea why. I'm not sure what it was for. Maybe some of this is for some of those other projects. I might have used, I might have been kidding like some of the Brenda Gervais or Blackbird. I don't know. But once I kitted up the stuff I remembered that I purchased for it, I still have nine of the 12. And then a couple of random DMC. And then two more weeks die works. I don't know. Don't know what they were for. Don't remember. Maybe they'll just go in my stack. I don't remember what I bought them for. All right, and then next is All right, so this is Let Love Rain by Teresa Kogut. I just am in love with that sampler on the cover, that blue 
like a brown and gold one. It's just so pretty. This one. So I kitted it up. So these are all of the flosses for that. And I'm going to use 40 count winter white linen by Seraphim. Which is just a nice neutral. And it takes a fat half because it is ginormous. Do I have any business starting a gigantic project like that? No. Am I going to do it? Yes. Next is Stacy Nash Primitives to my friend Pin Keep Stack. Oh, I like these because they're little. So I have the flosses for those. I haven't picked out any fabric yet. Calls for 36 count barbs blend, which I don't have any, even though I've tried to buy some, but I can't get it. <laughs> um, okay. And then the last one is Rejoice Evermore by Brenda Gervais. I am in love with this pattern. And so I got all the floss and the fabric I already had in my stash. Well, I had an abandoned project on it. So this calls for 40 count antique lace by Seraphim, which I have. This is the piece of fabric that I started the 2021 Modern Folk Embroidery stitch along on. And then I gave up because I didn't like how it was looking in the single color. I mean, there's nothing really wrong with it, but I saw the two color versions and they were just, I thought they looked so much better, but I didn't want to rip it out and redo it. So I just gave up. So I think that I'll be able to stitch the piece on this half and I'll just cut that part off and get rid of it. But I think I can stitch the other part up here because I actually think it goes sideways like this. And if I have to rip it out, then I'll rip it out, but I don't think I will. Okay. So there's that. And I think that's all of my cross stitch haul. Oh, we're at 57 minutes. Okay, the rest of it, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna take a long time to share with you because it's other stuff, um, but I will quickly say I've been doing some quilting. So I finished a quilt. Let me see. This is called the fat quarter dash pattern. Um, and I had a bundle of fabrics that I bought from an Etsy shop. It's mostly Rifle Paper Company fabric. It's very pretty. Um, and so I used that bundle for this quilt. Um, the back of it is a flannel from Joanne. <laughs> Look at that upside down but you get the picture the colors kind of matched and it was just pretty like nature and all of these are like mostly florals so this has got like butterflies and stuff like that so I made that quilt in the last couple weeks I am in the process of a new quilt that I started yesterday um, it was a I had a layer cake that I bought um, last weekend I went to two of my local quilt shops and did some shopping, which I'll share with you in just a minute. Um, and one of them was a layer cake of the Newport fabric line by Minnick and Simpson. And I found a very cute pattern called Lucky Duck by A Bright Corner. Um, and it takes a layer cake and then just some background fabric and, you know, backing and binding. So I used the layer cake and I got um, one of the other prints to use as the background. Um, and then backing and binding 
And so yesterday I spent the afternoon and evening making the blocks. They're not done yet. They're almost done. Um, but I have one more piece of this, you know, background fabric to add on the side of each block. And then they all fit together kind of like this to um, make the pattern. And so it's mostly navies and blues with some red. It's very pretty. It's a little more traditional than I normally go for with my quilting, but I just absolutely love this fabric. I thought it was so pretty. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna go for it. So I've got most of the blocks done. There are two blocks that are, there were a couple of prints in the line that are like tan. And I needed 30 of the 42 to make the blocks and a handful of them are a white background and so they just blended in too much. So I ended up using the two tan ones, but I really don't like how they look. I, I feel like they don't match very well. So I think instead of using those two tan ones, I am going to use some of the white background ones and just try to pick the ones that have the most contrast. It still won't be much, but I think it'll look better than the two tan ones. So these are all the blocks. I made all of these yesterday. I cut them all out and sewed them all yesterday. So you get in the groove and do some chain piecing. You can, you can sew pretty fast. Um, and then this is the binding fabric that I got. And then this is what I will use for the backing, which is really pretty. So that's my other quilt project. Maybe I'll work on that some more later today. Um, okay, I got some yarn. This is a, dar um, a dyer that's in Chattanooga actually called Dark Weight Fibers. Um, okay, some other things quickly that I got while I was shopping at the local quilt shop. Um, I got this fat quarter bundle of fabric. This is heirloom. It's one of the Ruby Star Society gals and I can't remember which one. Maybe it's Alexia, a bag. I can't remember. Anyways, I really like that. I got this very cute insulated tumbler. Look at that. It's quilts. So cute. Um, I got this cute little lunch box. I figured I could make myself like a little to go sewing kit, hand stitching kit that I could take with me. <laughs> um, and a little matching, like a little tin. Put needles or whatever in it. And this is, I'm gonna try, this is some Valdani cotton floss. And I'm gonna try for stitching. And then this cute pin cushion pattern. They had one made there and it was adorable. So I got that. My daughter really wanted this horse quilt. It's a kit. So we got the kit and she's going to have to help me make it. Because she wanted it, so she has to help me make it. Got a charm pack. But how cute. This cute little container. You can use it like as a pill box or something. It's a trinket box. Look how cute that is. And then a couple of that quarters of fabric and a little scrap piece of fabric that they had. Those will be good for backs of pillows, cross stitch pillows. All right, more fabric. Some fat quarters. The yard, look at the strawberries. So cute. I love this one. I love the colors and like little scissors. 
little flowers, stripes, or flowers. Look at this Alice in, not Alice in Wonderland, uh, Wizard of Oz fabric. How cute. The Tin Man, he's metallic. More strawberries. Cats, look at these cats, oh my gosh. Cute stripe. And I love this one. I love the color. I love the little pattern with the little bouquets. And then the last thing I'll show you is this is, um, I got this for backing. I have a quilt kit. It's one of Lori Holtz. It's the tomato pincushion quilt pattern that uses her stitch fabric line. And so it comes with all the fabric for the top and the binding, but it doesn't come with anything for backing. And so I bought four yards of this to use as the backing for that quilt whenever I get around to making it, hopefully soon. So that's, that's it. Those are my, that's all of the damage I've done in the last couple of weeks. So plenty to keep me busy, but anyway, all right, I've talked for long enough. So it is time for me to try to clean up as much of this as possible and then uh, go to Joanne's with my daughter so we can go see what they have on sale. Oh, the only other thing I'll mention is that we've got still a good selection of floss rings and scissor fobs and a few beaded counting pins sets um, in my Etsy shop if you're interested. And so um, go check those out. We've got, my daughter's been making some, she has a really good eye. Like she makes some really pretty stuff. Um, like here's, let's see here. Let me see if I can show you one that she made. Here's one that she made. It's so pretty. So this is this scissor fob. Here's another one that she made. Got like an owl bead in the middle. This is one I made. Look at that creepy hand. Anyway, so we've got um, still quite a few of these left in the shop if anyone's interested. I actually need to bag these up. I have them sitting in like a box here. Um, but yeah, these are, I mean, I really wish that they showed up better in pictures because they're so pretty. This is another one she made. They're so pretty. So yeah, go ahead and go on over to our Etsy shop and check it out. Um, the Etsy shop will be closed next week. Um, so it's gonna be closed for, for one, I'm gonna be on vacation. Um, but I could just, you know, I could just deactivate like my physical listings for like stickers and the fobs and stuff and leave my digital patterns up, you know, while we're out of town. But um, in solidarity with everyone else who's protesting Etsy's ridiculous fee increases, I'm gonna close my shop completely while, um, while we're out of town and, and, you know, for a little while. So if you're interested in anything, get it this week because by the end of the week, it'll be closed for at least a little bit. Um, so um, yeah, at least for as long as we're out of town, but maybe even longer. And you know, it'll be closed along with everyone else who's closing their shops to protest their ridiculous fee hikes. Um, I will say like, I'm not someone who depends on my Etsy income. Um, I have a regular job that I go to every day that pays the bills. And so the Etsy shop is really just my way of 
you know, you know, t taking this hobby that I enjoy and, you know, turning it into something a little bit extra. And it's nice. It helps to, you know, fund my cross stitch and quilting purchases. And, you know, I have fun making beaded fobs or, you know, project bags, but I don't need a million of them. So that way I can make them, but then somebody else can enjoy them. So I don't rely on my Etsy shop for my livelihood. Um, so the fee increases don't have the same impact on me as they do on others. But I mean, that doesn't mean that it's not still ridiculous how much they take out in fees. I mean, I, you, you would not believe, like when I look at my Etsy statements at the end of every month and when I'm like, I was just doing my taxes recently. And so I was putting all my stuff together to send it off to my accountant. And the amount of money that Etsy takes in fees is ridiculous. I mean, it's just crazy. Now it's a, I mean, I like the platform. It's nice to have a place where people can go and find you easily, but damn, it is, it is crazy. And then they just keep increasing them. It's, it's ridiculous anyway. So I'm going to be in solidarity with everyone else and closing my shop for that week or week and a half, um, along with everyone else. And I am thinking about whether, about setting up my own website instead. And I may keep the Etsy shop just with like a few items in it and try to use it to direct people to a different website. Um, but I just haven't had time to really do much research into that yet, which, you know, I'd need to find something where that can handle downloads and all that kind of stuff. So, um, but I am thinking about it because I'm just, it's ridiculous. Anyway, enough about that. But if you do want something, like I said, there's still a good selection of scissor fobs and other things in the shop, um, floss rings and all of that. So if you're interested, go check them out. Um, and if you want something, you know, maybe make your order this week because after that it'll be closed and unavailable for a little while. Um, all right. I think that's it. I'm at a minute, a minute, an hour and 11 minutes, almost 12. Long enough. I have talked long enough. So I will say thank you, everyone. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for watching. Thank you for all of your comments. Um, I really do enjoy sharing stuff with everyone and all the interaction. So I appreciate it. Um, have a great stitchy week or two or three or four or however long it is until I come back. <laughs> um, and I will see you next time. Thanks. Bye.